Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I've been using both Windows and OS X for at least three or four years now, and uh, I've come to understand idiosyncrasies on both platforms, uh, knowing that a lot of people are looking to OS X as a viable alternative to Windows. Uh, I thought it was uh, time that I kind of outlined some basic differences in the way that OS X does things compared to the way Windows does things. And uh, some of these you already know about and I'm not going to call your attention to. Um, some big differences, namely the placement of the menu inside of Windows is typically within the application and the placement of the menu on OS X is always at the top of the screen. Uh, now, preference uh, is completely uh, contingent on you. Uh, you know, one is not better than the other necessarily. Uh, some would argue that uh, OS X is better, uh, the way the menu is at the top of the screen. Some would argue that Windows is better with the menu inside the application. I'm not going to debate that because it's undebatable. Uh, but there are some things that are just different. And if you're in Windows and you're considering switching to the Mac or starting to use the Mac, there are some things you need to be aware of, uh, things that are done differently in OS X compared to Windows. Uh, now, as I roll forward, understand I'm going to present this in a way that it's geared towards Windows users looking at OS X, not necessarily the other way around, because there are more people thinking about going that direction than the other direction. Much like you always see people trying to make Windows look like OS X, but you never really see anybody trying to make OS X look like Windows. Hmm, wonder why that is. Any old way, uh, the first thing you need to understand is that in Windows, it's the Explorer. And in OS X, it's the Finder. Explorer, Finder. Either way, it's uh, the application, the utility, the program that allows you to browse your hard drive's contents or the har uh, contents of any drive that's connected to your system. So uh, the two are the converse equivalents when we're talking about the respective operating systems. So the first thing I wanted to point out is the way that OS X has field sorting handled as well as object sorting is a little different. There's really no auto arrange inside of OS X. There's the arrange by type, like file type or name or date, but it doesn't auto arrange. And so sometimes you have to go in and resort in order to clean things up. In fact, that's the, the feature that's still built into OS X is cleanup because the icons get messy. So that can be frustrating, especially if you've gotten used to it inside of uh, Windows itself. Uh, also, the list view inside of OS X uh, is it's got a limited set of fields, certainly not as much as Windows, and uh, most importantly, it doesn't automatically adjust the width, so you see horizontal scroll bars where you probably don't need to. Uh, m what's probably more frustrating to me, there's a nice little Windows tip that you could uh, control click or control double click uh, a field divider inside of at least the Windows Explorer as well as a few other apps and it will automatically size that particular column uh, to the, the width of the longest string. Uh, now, if that sounds geeky to you then you don't need to pay attention to it, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, there's one feature inside of Windows that doesn't exist inside of OS X. The window close button is a big one. Uh, when you're in Windows and you hit the X, it typically exits out of the application unless it's set to be handled differently. In most cases, it's, you know, that's quitting. That's getting out of the app altogether. But inside of OS X, when you click the equivalent to the close button or when you hover over the little icon, the X appears, you click it, you think you're exited out of the app entirely. Well, sometimes that's the case, but sometimes that's not the case. You haven't necessarily quit the application. You've just closed the window for the application. And uh, there's a big difference between those things. Uh, the workaround for that, and what I've kind of gotten used to, is the keyboard shortcut, which I really like. Inside of uh, OS X, you could do a command Q when you're in a program or an application, and that would quit. That that's that's it. That's exit. That's gone. There's the the, the program is out of memory. It's it's quit. Uh, and the command key, by the way, is the one with the open apple. That's the they used to, in fact, they used to call it the open apple key, but they're, I think they're getting rid of the open apple symbol. Uh, but control Q will uh, close the window, and the equivalent in Windows is Alt F4. That closes 
any window inside of Windows. So there's a, a big difference there. Uh, object renaming. In Windows, you can rename a file in a variety of ways. You could right click it, select rename. Uh, you could uh, select the object and tap F2, the key, and it'll go in and la allow you to rename things. Uh, and then another way, and this is the way I've, I've kind of been doing it lately, is you can select the icon, click the title once, wait a couple seconds, and then you can go in and rename it. Um, inside of uh, OS X, uh, there is now, at least in Leopard, you can't right-click a file to rename it. You can't easily rename the file, uh, but you can do that. The last thing that I showed you here in Windows, when you click the title uh, and then click it again, wait a second, then you can actually go in and, and rename it. So that's how you rename things easily inside of OS X. Just click the title, wait a couple seconds, then you can go and rename it. Another way you can do it is you can pull up the Info panel, and this would be the equivalent in Windows, you know when I tell you to, sometimes I say right click a file, go to properties, and then it pulls up this little uh, dialog, or I guess uh, uh, sh the sh property sheets, and uh, the equivalent to that in OS X is the info pane, and you can get to that by doing a command I when you're hovering over an object, and that will pull up a, a series, and it'll tell you general information about uh, that particular file. You can rename it. You can even choose uh, how you open that file by default, uh, or you know, for for that particular extension. So I just I info paned right now an AVI file. If I wanted to change the default behavior from QuickTime Player to VLC, I could do that right from here. So that that part is simpler. But in terms of renaming, um, the easiest way is how I outline is just somewhat uh, different than what you may have been used to in in in, in, in working inside of Windows. Um, See so your window resizing. This might snag you. Uh, at first, it, 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 it bothered me, but I kind of got used to it. It doesn't really bother me anymore. Uh, in Windows, you can pretty much drag any size uh, or any side of a window around. Like if I want to resize this message window, I can click the top and, and move it up and down and resize that way. I can grab the size and resize it that way. Well, inside of OS X, there's only one way of resizing it, and that's by grabbing the lower right-hand corner and resizing at will, and uh, that's the only way you're able to resize a window. It's, it could be a big deal for you, but it's not a showstopper. You know, after you get used to it, it's not a big deal. Uh, window maximizing. Now, in OS X, the equivalent is zoom. They don't really call it maximize, and it, it starts to make sense after you start playing with it. Um, inside of Windows, when I hit the maximize button, uh, it will maximize the window. It'll take up full screen. If you press the zoom button or the equivalent maximize button, which is what you see if you hover over one of the little uh, icons in a window and you see the little plus sign, if you press it, sometimes it will go full screen in certain applications like text edit, and sometimes it will just uh, resize itself but not go full screen but go the maximum height of your screen resolution. It's, it's just weird. It's, it's, it's behavior is seemingly erratic. I'm sure that there's a rhyme and reason as to why it zooms this way in some cases and zooms this way in other cases, but uh, don't expect it to open up or zoom full screen. That's just not the way it works inside of OS X. Um, the object icon titles. Okay, so on the Windows desktop you, or even inside the Windows Explorer, um, it truncates file names typically at the end of the file name if you have the icon spacing set to quite tight. Uh, inside of OS X, however, uh, it truncates differently. Sometimes it truncates the end of the file name. If there's not enough space, sometimes it truncates in the middle of the information. And um, I, I found it to be a little frustrating until I found the setting that worked best on the desktop. And my setting that I've, uh, I've found the, the most useful has been uh, the, the largest grid spacing with the icon being 32 by 32 pixels, much like I have it inside of Windows, and then uh, having the title of the icon or object to the side rather than on the bottom. It, it's very clean, and once you have the, uh, once you arrange your desktop that way, it may be a little different at first, but you kind of get used to it. It's like, wow, that's a lot of information in really not taking a lot of space. 
Uh, so it just works differently in the, the, the way that uh, the space that you have to work with as well as the font size that you have to work with the objects uh, on your desktop. You can easily change the view inside of uh, OS X uh, by right clicking the desktop, show view options. You can make the text size as small as 10 point compared to Windows where by default you can go as low as 8 point. So it seems you can get more information on a, on a Windows desktop that you can on OS X. On OS X, the fonts tend to be a, just a tiny bit larger, which I'm sure you know is, is wonderful for all those of you who like larger fonts. Uh, copying and moving objects. Now this is a big one for me. When Vista was released, one of the things I loved about it is that it gave tons of information regarding uh, file copying and, and, and pasting and file moving. It would tell you, hey, you're moving this file from this folder to this folder. There's a newer one that exists. Are you sure you want to copy it? Do you want to copy it but make a copy of the old file? Uh, or do you want to move it? I mean, it gives you a lot of information inside of Vista, and that's something that, you know, I, I'm Windows definitely has over OS 10 because OS 10 just basically says, um, there are files in this folder that are named the same thing. Do you want to replace it? Uh, so it's it's kind of it's not just dumbed down. It's just dumb. It doesn't give you enough information. Much like XP doesn't give you enough information to troubleshoot or to see whether or not you actually do want to move or copy those files, or if you have to dig deeper to make sure that you're copying or moving the right files and you're replacing the right files rather than the wrong files. So Vista definitely has it over OS X in my mind because OS X doesn't have a way to do it. You can't get more information out of that particular operation. Uh, be be uh, forewarned. Okay, and the last point I'm going to bring up is title bars. In Windows, when you double click a title bar, it goes full screen. In OS X, when you double click a title bar, it minimizes the window. And to tell you the truth, um, I got to tell you, I really like double clicking the title bar and minimizing the window. That's just me. Uh, I'm crazy that way, but I, I happen to like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of nice. And one thing they added in Leopard as well, talking about minimizing, uh, you can hide a window altogether inside of OS X with absolute ease. Uh, you just basically, if you've got a window open, you want it, you want the program running or whatever. You've got, you need the window open, but you don't want to see it. You can press Command H. It hides the window. You don't even see the window open inside of your dock, as they call it in OS X. You know, there's there's a lot of differences between the two operating systems. The bottom line is, is that if you can do it in Windows. For the most part, you can do it inside of OS X. There are some differences, uh, certainly, and you know, as I said, some uh, one operating system may have more information uh, or a different way, or a quicker way, or an easier way of doing something. But it's not, it's not something you should be afraid of. And, and that's really what I wanted to, to get across uh, more than anything else by uh, building this list. And I'm, I'm certain I could go on and on about the differences between the two operating systems. But uh, you know, to me, it's just getting in trying, playing, uh, and, and just not stopping yourself at, at, oh, it's different. And, you know, the converse could be true. You know, if you've never been happy with OS X, you don't look at Windows as the strange beast. I mean, they're just different, but different in some cases can be better. You know, and I'm talking from, from both sides of the street, and I'm not even bringing up Linux. Don't even, I just, that just, I, completely, I'm, do, I'm done with the, I'm done with the, I can't, I can't do the, let's just keep it at OS X and, and Vista for the time being. Um, it's easier to manage that way. Anyway, if you have any other suggestions for uh, helping people cope uh, in living with two operating systems, uh, you know, either leave a follow-up comment in this uh, message thread, or you can email me, chris at perillo.com. Uh, I'll be happy to receive your email. I may not be able to respond to it, but, you know, if it's useful, I'd love to share it with the rest of the community at large. And of course, you're also welcome to swing by the chat room. As Board College Kids says, it's, uh, it's a URL that uh, hopefully you've memorized by now. We, we get into these kinds of debates every day now, uh, talking about operating system choices and software choices, hardware choices. We just love talking tech 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.